Today, I was recently made aware of a short opinion piece by Ed Kilgore, published in New York Magazine under its Intelligencer section on October 4th of this year. Reading it, with its original title not being nearly as direct as the one that you would see if you were to move your cursor over the tab or read the URL, as it says, quote, No, red state rebels, there will be no secession, end quote. There is a stunning amount of naked, left-wing honesty that is so often masked with the language of legality, humanism, or other sound bites in an attempt of cleverness to hide their contempt, something we saw last election cycle under the guise of unity. This short piece simply lays out their justification for their hatred of any apostate to the progressive religion with its desire to rule. Before diving into the article, however, some important context. There has been growing sentiments both among Blue and Red America along ideological lines for some kind of national separation, secession, or what has now been called these days a national divorce. This idea of separation, secession, or even a spiritual or ideological separation akin to sleeping in separate bedrooms has been talked about at length. From the Claremont Institute to the National Review, with others on the left sneering at the idea, happily telling these wishful advocates and even their detractors, good riddance. It has been debated extensively by pundits on the right and the left, with echoes of previous conversations of secession, albeit with the stakes much higher than ever before. But this is not explicitly a Red America or Conservative America idea. In fact, when the article opens, Kilgore references previous pieces that detail that the differences between Blue and Red America aren't as artificial as some may claim, and he cites polling data that shows Red Americans favor some kind of separation at 52%, where Biden voters had said the same in Blue states around 41%. Sizable numbers indeed for both parties vying for control of their own destiny, and by extension, the country. He continues, and accurately articulates that there is more discussion about a national divorce on the right than the left, as evidenced by recent discussions from David Reboy, Glenn Beck, and even online personalities like Scott Greer debating Ramsey Paul. He proceeds to reference Mr. Reboy's recent essay from the Claremont Institute, quoting the following passage. Quote, we have in America today what are, essentially, two competing, radically different, and mutually exclusive conceptions of the good, of justice, and of the proper role of the state in its interaction with its citizens. If we disagree on these big things, which will necessarily manifest in every political issue, large or small, what strong force could possibly reunite us? Or, to ask a question that's perhaps more pertinent, maybe not today or tomorrow, but soon. What force could keep us from coming apart? End quote. The immediate comparison to the antebellum South is immediately followed. Knowing full well that the associated narratives of the American Civil War are well accepted within his frame. Keep in mind, however, secession was discussed in New England during the time of the War of 1812 and the Hartford Convention. But the proto-Confederate talk continues. The narrative is strong within American society, even on the right, that those who fought for the Confederacy were evil, racist, bigoted, although their views towards African Americans would very well be seen in their northern counterparts. Whether repatriation or abolition in the name of being led by their white abolitionist guardian, the political subjugation of those that progressives see as their inferiors from over 100 years ago still rings true today, although who and where has certainly changed. While Kilgore claims he doesn't wish to see a national divorce, the reasoning becomes clear. His desire, like all progressive zealots found so often in their intelligentsia or journalistic classes, is the desire to rule, destroy, and humiliate his enemies. He writes the following, quote, So we might drift apart more or less peacefully this time around? Possibly, but count me out when it comes to agreeing to a national divorce. Yes, I might derive great joy from the overthrow of the U.S. Senate and its filibuster and the conservative majority on the U.S. Supreme Court. I would feel much safer in a progressive nation that didn't arm its citizens to the teeth, didn't view other nations as shitholes full of subhuman orcs to be subdued, and didn't claim to accept calamitous climate change as just the price of doing business." End quote. The caricature of Red America isn't a caricature to him. It is a legitimately held view that he has of his red state countrymen, a term I use lightly. What follows is a comparison of anti-abortion laws in red states to slavery, 
calling women in Red America subjugated. He is clearly aware of the lacking political energy, however, for blue staters to take up arms against their red state countrymen, despite the real desire emerging in the final paragraph. Quote, So I say to would-be secessionists, please don't go, and if it's somehow in my power, I won't let you go. I have no illusion of compromises yet untried or third ways left unexplored. So let's have it out right here in America as peacefully as we can manage. Perhaps if we continue to battle for control of our common country, one side or another might win a popular mandate to exercise real power and change the facts on the ground, breaking the perpetual stalemate. If not, then let's consider the wisdom of those who crushed the Confederacy in the belief that the misery of political conflict is better than the literal civic death of national disunion. End quote. Some important quotes that stick out. I won't let you go. So let's have it out right here. Might win a popular mandate, breaking the perpetual stalemate. That the misery of political conflict is better than the literal civic death of national disunion. The nation is in political and civic disunion. Between the conflicting narratives of what America is, the erasure of American heroes and statues, normal parents simply not wishing for their kids to be brainwashed or assaulted in school are now arrested as domestic terrorists. And the state-sponsored terrorism, from the condoning and the lack of investigation to organized left-wing violence, civic death has been here for some time. To obfuscate this fact in order for one's ongoing powder fantasy to continue is clear. When Kilgore states he wants to have it out and find a way to break the stalemate, he wants to continue to turn up the heat in the pot until, much like the American South antebellum, there is no longer a viable political solution because all electoral chances at victory have been wiped out. They want you boiled alive from federal supremacy, endless migration, and even the most basic forms of dissent met with the full force of the security state. This short opinion piece details the desire to keep you, the conservative, the grilling red state American, the dissident, all of you regardless of whether you agree or disagree on anything, to be subjugated and ruled by people who see themselves as their intellectual and cultural superiors, who will happily reduce your quality of life back to 1859 in the name of climate change or any other progressive sacrament that they hold dear in this practice. And if you dare to open up the comment section of this article, you'll see just how true this is. So why is there a conversation about national divorce taken more seriously than ever? Simple. The desire to subjugate, humiliate, and dominate all aspects of you and your children's lives is being said more and more, with the quiet part being said out loud, because they know that the left, themselves, the writer of this article, are in power. And Red Americans are finally becoming aware of just how much death and destruction their neighbors wish upon them. Thank you all for watching this video. I'll see you all next time. Be prudent, everybody.